everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And we are here today to recap that Being Mary Jane series finale movie that they threw our way. <laughs> Hey guys, um, as always, before we get started, um, please leave your comments in the video. Um, if I say anything that um, interests you, anything that um, you disagree with, um, leave it in the comment section. Um, please click that thumbs up button. Um, all of that helps me get more traction on my videos and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So let's go ahead and get into this recap. So you guys know in my last video where I uh, recapped um, things that my most memorable moments from being Mary Jane, the um, TV show. And um, I mentioned the fact that this movie was actually supposed to come out in January of last year. They didn't even film it until February. But here it is, you know, over a year later and we're just now getting the movie. So now I'm starting to wonder if the reason they shelved this movie was because they knew it was not good. <laughs> so they decided that since we kept talking about the movie and we kept talking about how we were waiting on this movie, that they would go ahead and throw it like if they had some needed some filler space, you know, something to drop into a blank space or something, that they would go ahead and run this movie. Uh, but if that wasn't the case, we weren't going to ever see this movie. And I'm just like, oh my God, I cannot believe this. So of course, you know, there were people that loved the movie, thought it was awesome. And then there were some of us that didn't think it was so awesome. And once again, I remind you guys that I am an author. So I look at things totally different um, than the average viewer is looking at it. So let's go ahead and do a rundown of what happened on this doggone movie. So um, the show opens up and Justin is, um, actually I missed the first two minutes so something might have happened before them two minutes. They might have been doing like a flashback or whatever. But if you guys remember when the show ended, um, Mary Jane had the opportunity to choose the next, um, oh my God, was it, the, it wasn't the executive producer the executive producer because Garrett whatever Garrett's position was it was out of Cara and um, Justin to get that position and then they told Mary Jane that she had the final say so and so Mary Jane went with Cara and Justin got his feelings and he left so they come back and so Justin and has shown up <laughs> so him and Mary Jane are talking and Justin get down on his knees and he proposed um, to Mary Jane, and she's looking all around like, Lord, Jesus wasn't supposed to do now. And so she give him like this weak, yes, I'll marry you. And so then the next day she tells um, Kara that after Justin left the country, you know, she went and did that um, IVF implant. Because I think that's that was the final scene in the last episode of the final season was where she called and made the appointment or something to go get her embryos implanted. So she was telling Cara that she had gone ahead and did that. And now she was waiting to see if the procedure took. So she's afraid to have sex with Justin until she can confirm um, if she's pregnant or not. And so remember, she had to go get sperm from the sperm bank and all of that. So I'm like, Lord have mercy. So, um... Then they have a scene, you know, so they're going back and forth with Mary Jane, you know, trying to avoid having sex. You know, she doing all these things to please Justin. Justin looking at her like, what the hell going on? <laughs> like, why can we not have sex? So then we have this just random scene where it's at nighttime. They're in the bed. She got all this, um, this teddy. And then she hands him some butt lubricant <laughs> and tell him, you know, well, we're going to do it that way. I just like, like, could she not have told him that her period was on or something? Like, why? Why just doing too much? So then she comes in and um came in from work the next day. And now she's still um, Mary Jane that we know, flag girl Mary Jane, okay? So she comes in and Justin is cooking dinner. And so she goes to the bathroom and takes a pregnancy test. So she's sitting in the bathroom, you know, looking all confused, like, what am I going to do? And so Justin is yelling to her from the kitchen. 
and she um, doesn't answer so he goes to the bathroom they'll make sure she's okay so he opens the door and y'all it's very Jane. I think she was still living in that suite at the hotel so she never did buy a place to live so I'm thinking okay it's like all this time that took place is you know been a couple of months or whatever that Justin has been gone well, lo and behold, we find out Justin was only gone for 48 hours. So he left to go think and clear his head and then came right on back to Mary Jane. And so in all in those 48 hours, Mary Jane was able to call that clinic, set up an appointment, um, get them embryos implanted and all of that. And I'm like, really, does it work like that? So she tells him, you know, about the IVF and of course everything is his fault and that he made her do the procedure because he left, you know, he was jealous, he was this, he was that. And so now she is pregnant. So the pregnancy test came back positive. So Justin explains, you know, that he was angry that she chose Carl over him, you know, but after he had a couple of hours to reflect over it, it just made him love her more because it shows that she's loyal to a fault. And that, you know, if he ever needed her, you know, she would have his back the same way she had Kara's back. You know, when it comes to things like that, she doesn't let emotion overrule her. So child, so now he's upset and, you know, that she didn't tell him, you know, that she may be pregnant um, before accepting the proposal. He thinks that the noble thing should have been, um, yes, Justin, I want to marry you. But before I say yes, I need to let you know that. I had a temper tantrum after you left with your temper tantrum and I went and had that embryo implanted and um, some sperm from some random donor and now I'm pregnant and it ain't even your child, which I don't understand now that we think about it. So her and Justin were together. They were in a sexual relationship, right? So who's to say that the baby wasn't Justin's baby? I mean, because if he was only gone for 48 hours and she had the procedure done, like how much time has passed? I, I don't understand Mary Jane. Like the writing on this show was so sloppy. So he was upset and he told her that he was going into the other room. You know, he won't be in the room whether he was going to bed. So Justin, you know, basically tells her that he feels betrayed and forced into raising another man's child. And, um, you know, he pulled a bitch ass move. <laughs> he walked away and told her, you know, I can't marry you, girl. I don't want to be involved in this type of situation. So then in the middle of the night, Mary Jane sleeping on the sofa, like really she was going to sleep in the so on the sofa in her own apartment or her own suite and not go in that room and tell him like, well, if you got an issue, you need to go home or at the very least you need to scoot over so I can get in my bed. But anyway, he comes in, wakes her up and, you know, she tells her that um, he can't marry her and that he wishes her the best. So then we fast forward um, a few months. And Mary Jane um, is looking a hot mess, okay? She had all this um, natural hair wig. And it wasn't even like your typical natural hair wig. It was like, I don't know what that thing was. Because, you know, usually in the um, natural hair wigs, the hair is very spirally and curly. And it still has some sheen to it. Well, this thing that Mary Jane had on her hair had a part way over here and then it had like a brush over and it was just very dry and frizzy looking and it was just like all over her head and I was just like, oh my God, what is going on? So she goes to a Lamaze class and she's in the Lamaze class by herself and so when the class ends, she pulls out this sausage or this hot dog or something out of her bag. And so she's sitting on the floor eating it. And then all of a sudden she gets sick. And so she goes over into a garbage can and she's hurling up what she ate when um, Morris Chestnut walk up. <laughs> so it turns out that they know each other from college. They used to date when they were back in college. And like he was very unpopular he was a nerd he wore eyeglasses he was skinny but now he's fine he done had some lasik eye surgery and then um, shaved his head and he's just looking um very delicious on this show so he um didn't seem to be bothered by the fact that um mary jane was pregnant okay so he was telling Mary Jane, I think they went to lunch. And so, you know, he was telling her that he wanted to be with her, um, but she didn't, 
No, Mary Jane told him that she wanted to be with him, but he wanted to be with his career, that he didn't have time for her. So now he's like this successful guy in the tech industry, and I think he owns his own company or is a partner in his own company. So anyway, um, she has another Lamaze class, and so he shows up at the Lamaze class. Now, that was some kind of stalker um, tendencies to be. So whatever this building is, that she's having these Lamaze classes. It must be like a medical professional's um, building where you have all different type of doctors and services because he told her that his dentist um, was on the same floor and she was taking these Lamaze classes. And so he you know, basically tells her that he knows she's alone and everything. And so he wants to be there for her and to just let him go in and do the Lamaze classes with him and everything. So she agrees. So then they go back to um, her place. <laughs> she already half naked sitting on the sofa getting a massage now she pregnant y'all like three four five months pregnant and got on her panties and bra he's giving her a massage and then she started talking about how horny she is and how um pregnant women have the best sex and so this thing i know she turns around um lays back on the sofa and just spread eagle and then without any hesitation he just go down and start eating the cooch patch and i'm just like <laughs> where do we do this at okay are y'all is this how y'all really behaving um in y'all real lives y'all just running into random guys and picking up and they okay with the fact that you're pregnant and they're just hitting it and going on about their business like i'm sure it's happening somewhere but remember now mary jane I'm supposed to be a professional like i just i don't know it was just too much for me so anyway, after they have sex, uh, she invites him to, oh, so after he, you know, eat the patch, they end up in bed and she on top and she riding him and everything. So after they have sex, um, she invites him to go home with her to Atlanta because Nisi um, is in school and Nisi um, is graduating. Now she in cosmetology school. So she's graduating from cosmetology school and Mary Jane is going back. So she wants, um, Bo to go with her. So he tells her um, that he will. So then we have a scene with Cara and Cara's at home and she's doing her um, self-examination for breast cancer. And so she finds a lump and so she calls the doctor and the doctor suggests that she have a um, bilateral mastectomy um, and then she wouldn't have to do chemo or anything. And we find out that Cara, um, has, her family has a history of breast cancer. I think her mom and somebody else had it and they may have died from it and so she posted the actress that plays Cara actually posted on Twitter that that whole um scene was well the whole storyline about her and the breast cancer was based on her real life experience that she did have um breast cancer and that was her options and that was the procedure that she had and to be honest with you the scenes with Cara were the most well-written. They were the most um, believable scenes in the show. And I just hated that it had to come out and be revealed in this sloppy movie that they put out. But um, kudos to Cara for sharing her um, story and for her bravery. And um, thank God that, you know, she doesn't have breast cancer right now in real life. So they're back at work and um, Mary Jane walks in gloating about the sex with Cara. And she was just like so self-absorbed as always in her story that she didn't even get to notice that something was wrong with Cara. And so Cara was just like, girl, I am so over you right now. So she was like, you know, Mary Jane, I'm busy. I got things to do. I'll talk to you later. You know, so still Mary Jane didn't, you know, question or anything. She just just walked out so then she's in Atlanta having dinner with the family and so she lets them know that she invited on um, Beauregard Mercer to Nisi's graduation and no one seems to think it was odd <laughs> like girl where well, you done found this man at and got him coming but then I remember she used to date him in college so they already know who he is and let me say this about um her family home so I picked up on this during the marathon, but I don't think I put it in that video. But when Mary Jane um, moved to New York, when the show you know, was featured with her being in New York, they kept showing images of the family house. Okay, and so I kept saying to myself, that is not... That's not the house from the earlier seasons. Like the inside of the house looks the same when they're shooting scenes, but the outside of that house 
that is not the house. Because remember, you would go down the steps and they had the circular drive and then they had like the shrubberies going around the drive. Um, this house sat like really far back from the road. Um, I can't remember if it had a driveway or not, but it just wasn't the same house. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe when Mara um, Brock Akil left the show, she took her set with her. And then, you know, it's not hard to recreate the inside set, but it is kind of hard to recreate the outside of the house. So here we go in this movie. We got the same inside of the house, but the outside of the house is a totally different house. Like, don't even look like the house they tried to fake us with in the last season. And it definitely didn't even look anything like the house from um, when the show first started. So just not paying attention to details or thinking that we weren't going to pay attention to detail. He shows up, he's talking to the mom and it might've been after the graduate, they were having Nisio party after the graduation. So he's talking to the mom and he tells the mom that, um, and so he tells the mom that he was divorced and that the reason him and his wife divorced was because the wife didn't want to have kids and it was very important to him to have children. You know, he wanted to have a family because he was actually adopted and he wants to give to another child what his adoptive mother gave him, the opportunities and the chance. And so I was sitting there saying, okay, well, this all makes sense. Um, Beauregard ain't really thinking about Mary Jane. He's thinking about that baby and he just wants her because she's pregnant and that's some red flags to me, but Mama Patterson didn't seem to pick up on it or think that conversation was odd. Oh, and then <laughs> I forgot to mention this. So and I think what happened the first part of the show was Nisi. So remember Nisi had gotten, was working at the salon. She messed up. She went back to the lady, begged the lady to take her back. The lady agreed to take her back. So we're at the salon. And so Nisi is getting into it. So she then graduated from being the shampoo girl to now she's actually doing people's hair. And she gets into it with another stylist because she says that the stylist was still in her clients. And so the lady who owned the shop was trying to tell her, well, technically you don't have any clients, you know? And if you don't want, like if you did somebody's hair two weeks ago, if you want that person to choose you again this week, then you got to step your game up and you got to give them a reason to want to come in and select you. Um, and that's what this other girl did. So evidently when the other girl did her hair before and she compared the two of you, she liked the other girl better. So Nisi got all in her feelings and told her that she quit. <laughs> she didn't want the job no more. And I'm like, okay, that's the lady that gave you an opportunity and you just going to be blank about it just just messy Nisi and I just don't understand how Nisi gonna prosper <laughs> you know treating people that way so back to the graduation and Nisi um goes after she you know quits her job she goes to this nonprofit I guess that help people find jobs and so she meets with this guy and so the guy tells her you know he has an MBA but he wants to give back to the community and everything and that's why he's working um at this nonprofit so he tells Nisi you know she needs to write a business plan and be able to pitch the business plan so she can get people to give her money so she can open up her own hair salon once she graduates and get her um cosmetology license so Nisi gives the um, the pitch to her family. And so now you know, like when you go on, shark, on the Shark Tank on TV, you give your pitch and then they come back and they critique your pitch and they ask you questions and everything. And then they either agree to give you the money or they don't agree. So Nisi got all defensive and upset in her feelings because she felt that they were judging her. And so she storms out of the room. Now, granted, she got the guy from the, the, um, the job training place. He all at the Patterson's house. And I'm just like, this is just so unprofessional that you were his client at this job training place. Now he all at your house. And I can understand her inviting him to the graduation, but girl, you only met with this man one or two times. Like, did he even deserve an invitation to the graduation? So child, um, she gets offended and she storms off. And so the guy, you know, goes after her to talk to her and tell her, you know, they were just giving honest feedback or whatever. Then that, that, they kissed. And I was just like, what is going on here? 
So child, next thing we have is the next morning. Uh, they done fell asleep on the couch. Don't look like they did anything, but you know, they did fall asleep. So Nisi like, oh Lord, I can get you out of this house before my grandma <laughs> wake up and come down and find out that you have been here all night. So they try and sneak out the house, but mom passed was already up. And she was like, child, come on in here and eat some breakfast. Like, she wasn't even mad. Oh, and then the storyline, you remember the Pattersons were supposed to be getting a divorce. So they claim that they're moving on with the divorce. And he's going to move back to Mississippi. They're going to sell the house and everything. And then she, I don't know where she was going to go or what she was going to do with her life after that. So now Mary Jane's back in New York. And she goes into labor while she was on set filming a show. And so she's only seven and a half months pregnant. They rush her to the hospital. They got to do an emergency C-section um, because she has preeclampsia. And they got to take the baby. So while Kara is standing at the um, nurse's desk, Justin walks up. So she's like, what you doing here? So he was like, oh, I saw on Twitter, you know, that Mary Jane had went into labor. So I just wanted to come make sure she was okay. But then he realizes it was a mistake and tells Kara, you know, um, just tell her, you know, don't tell her I came. I just wanted to make sure, you know, that she was okay. I was concerned and worried. So Mary Jane ends up having a little boy. <laughs> so there were, what it seemed, they tried to make it seem like she had some complications and there was a problem with his lungs and all of this, you know, with him being a preemie. So they got to keep him under observation. Now this um, scene kind of pissed me off because I have a niece. Actually, I have two nieces that were uh, born premature and one of them was born, um, Savannah was born, like she was rich. She, she was born in late November, but her due date was like Valentine's Day. So that was too, like she couldn't even, been, her mom wasn't even at seven months. So she was in the, hospital ICU, um, neonatal um, ICU for like, I think she came home. She may have came home like around the day that she was actually supposed to be born. So over two months, two and a half months early. But uh, Mary Jane baby that was early, he got to go home and that baby looked like he weighed about 10, 11 pounds. <laughs> like there was no birth defects. He wasn't like, a, you know, most premature babies are really tiny. This was like a full-size baby. And I'm just like, y'all are really playing us right now. So mom and Papa Patterson, they finally arrive. And um, we find out that Mary Jane hasn't seen the baby yet. So it's making me think that it was the next morning. So the dad goes and he talks to the nurse and the nurse um, comes in and tells her that everything is fine, that the baby is okay, and then I guess that they could go home. And I was just like, no research whatsoever has, was done in writing this show. So we find out that um, Patrick has been sober for five years, and I'm thinking, nope, that's not adding up right, because <laughs> Patrick... Remember, I told you in my last video from the marathon that those four seasons of being Mary Jane were less than two, a span of two years. And we know that Patrick had not been sober that entire time. So they throw in there that he'd been um, sober for five years. So anyway, the father and the two sons, PJ and Patrick, they're at the basketball court and they say that they're there to stage an intervention for uh, Papa Patterson. So basically they want him to reconsider um, divorcing their mother to forgive her and give her another chance. And I had to totally forget at that point that they was going through, you know, that whole thing with her cheating on him with Patrick's dad. And Patrick said that um, after finding out that Fred Williamson was his daddy for real, he's only talked to him a couple of times. And as far as he's concerned, Papa Patterson, although he wasn't his biological father, is, you know, the only daddy that he know and that uh, he wants his mom and daddy to be together. So back in New York, uh, Mary Jane and the baby are home and Bo is there uh, trying to help name the baby. So the mama had gave her this um, quilt that was like a family heirloom. And now I thought the quilt um, said it belonged to Albert Patterson. So Mary Jane said she was going to name the baby um, Albert Patterson. But then I think she was calling him like Albie or something like that. Because I just can't picture in 2019 any child being named Albert. 
But um, anyway, <laughs> then I got to thinking um, it was funny because y'all remember Mama Patterson with Shug Avery in The Color Purple. And remember um, Mr., the guy that Miss Seeley was married to, his real name was Albert. So I was like, y'all just so messy over here on this writing. So back at work, Kara is talking to Mary Jane and asks her if she would be the executor of her estate. And so, or of her power of attorney. And so Mary Jane was like, what are you talking about? You know, why don't you go get this person or that person? And so then Carl finally breaks down and tell uh, Mary Jane about her diagnosis. So uh, Mary Jane agrees to go with Cara to the hospital when she has her surgery. Oh, and they had told us in the beginning of the show that um, the boyfriend, I can't remember his name, was in Brazil applying for a job as a sportscaster over there. So they're at the hospital and uh, while Cara was out, um, oh, Orlando. So Mary Jane calls Orlando who comes, you know, from Brazil. And so Mary Jane leaves, um, Orlando comes in and he proposes to Cara. And so Cara's like, oh, you know, before that, you know, I got to tell you, I did, did the double mastectomy. Like, I don't know what she thought he thought that she was in the hospital for. And she telling him this, like, you know, he don't know that this is what's going on and she doesn't have the breast removed. She's going to have to have implants and all of that. But he tells her he doesn't care that um, he loves her and he's going to be there with her and he wants her to be his wife. So when Mary Jane returns um, to work, Justin has been called in to fill in for Cara. And so I forgot that um, at this point that Mary Jane even had a baby because um the baby came home from the hospital. We didn't see the baby no more. So the baby finally returns. And then it also didn't help that they kept having these five to 10 minute commercial breaks. So even though the movie was from eight to 10, it probably was only about an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes of actual movie. And the rest of it was all these long drawn out commercials. So then we go back to Atlanta and the family surprises Nisi with a salon in the house. And we learn that uh, PJ has bought the house from his parents and he's going to allow Nisi to stay in the house for as long as she like. And so everybody on Twitter was saying, how did they build that salon in that house? And Nisi lives in the house <laughs> and Nisi didn't know what was going on in the house. So some more bad writing there. So back in New York, um, MJ and Justin are talking about her segment when Bo comes in. And so uh, Justin called Bo the baby nurse and the placeholder. <laughs> like oh my god the shade i cannot with this show so at the house um bo wants to know if he should uh, be worried about the green-eyed monster talking about justin so you know obviously some tension there so then later on there's some kind of um, media dinner that's going on and so bo shows up at the studio because he's going to be mary jane's date so before Mary Jane um, can come out, the two guys get into a fight in the newsroom. And then um, afterward, um, afterwards, Bo calls Justin a little bitch. And then um, Justin hauled off like any man would have and punched him in the face you know, for saying that. So they had to separate them two and make um, Bo, I think he had to leave the premises. So Bo says that he can see um, in Mary Jane's eyes that um, she still loves Justin. And so after Bo leaves, um, Aaron tells Mary Jane that it was Cara's decision to bring Justin back. So then Mary Jane um, goes to see Cara and Cara um, lets her know that she did it because she could tell that Justin still loves Mary Jane. And then she slips up and tells Mary Jane about Justin um, being at the hospital while she was having the C-section. And so she tells Mary Jane that she believes that Justin is her unicorn and she will be settling um, if she chooses Bo. And you remember uh, Mary Jane was always looking for her black unicorn. So Justin um, at some point has purchased this farmhouse that um, Mary Jane had no idea about because she said she had to ask somebody for the address or she had to look it up on some app or something to find out where it was. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, when did Justin buy this um, house for Mary Jane? Jane, was it before the season ended, the last season ended, did he buy the house um, after he, in the 48 hours when he decided he was going to propose to her, I have no clue, but Justin um, tells her that, um, what did she, what did he tell her that he was 
working. He didn't tell her about the house because he was having the house remodeled or updated or something to surprise her once they got married. And so, you know, he tells her that he still loves her and he loves everything about her and everything. And so Mary Jane says that um, she thinks that his proposal has something to do with something else. So they were going back and forth. So then um, Justin started quoting. Remember, she used to have that Odyssey book on her nightstand. So Justin is like quoting from that and telling her, you know, that he remembered that um, scene. And he, so then they end up having sex because he was in the barn of this farmhouse when she walked up. So they was like on the, the quilts from the horses or something like that. And they laying out there having sex and everything. And I'm like, Lord Jesus. So after they have sex, they're back in the house. When Mary Jane gets a call from her real nurse, not um, Bo, who's the fill-in nurse. And so something happened with the nurse's dad and she has to leave. And so she needs um, Mary Jane to come back. So Justin says that, you know, he's going to go with her. And so they go back to the house because actually I think she had took like an Uber or something to get to the um, get to the farmhouse. And so Justin takes her back. And so we find out that the baby has been suffering from colic. And to cure the colic or to treat the colic, um, she goes into the bathroom and, you know, closes up the bathroom, turns on the hot shower. So the room steams up. So they're in the bathroom and they're sitting down. So then she says that she needs to go and make the baby a bottle. <laughs> so she goes into the kitchen to make the bottle. You know, she can hear Justin um, singing. What was that song he was singing? Um, oh, if I only had a heart. I think it's from the Wizard of Oz. Um, if I only had a heart. Yeah. So <laughs> he was singing that song. So then there's a knock at the door. Mary Jane goes to the door and she peeps out the little peephole and it is... Um, Bo at the door. Now me, I wouldn't open the door. <laughs> I just would let him knock. But she lets him in. So he's talking to her and he gets down on his knees to propose when all of a sudden here comes Daddy Justin holding um Albie in his arms and then um Bo look up and he knows that the battle is over. Okay, so next thing we know is the day of the wedding and Mary Jane comes down. We don't know if she's going to marry Bo or if she's going to marry Justin. Y'all go deep in my heart. I was hoping that Mary Jane had them called up David, asked David for some sperm. David sent that sperm. She went and got um, pregnant. <laughs> And um, that that was David downstairs waiting. But uh, I found out that Stephen uh, Bishop was still salty about being written out of the original Mary Jane show. And he didn't want nothing else to do with um, this being Mary Jane show. So, child, it was Justin down there. And it was a very uneventful wedding that they had. Carl wasn't even at the wedding. Um, a couple of other people wasn't even at the wedding. Child, I don't know what was going on. But anyway, that's how the um, movie ended. And that is the end of being Mary Jane. And so I'm still just very disappointed in the poor writing of the show. I mean, because all that they threw into them, like I said, really came out to be about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, what they threw into that hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half minus some commercials could have been a whole nother season. It could have been planned out a whole lot better. And, but it is what it is. It's over and done with. I wish there was some kind of way that Mara um, Brock Akil could get her show back and, <laughs> and give it a proper send off. But we know that that's um, not going to happen. So anyway, guys, what did you think about the um, series finale? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it just okay for you? Let me know in the comments, um, rate the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I should talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.